In the mid to late 70s, Pong took the world by storm. Not just because it was the first home video game, but because it was pretty much the only home video game. Pong was so popular that there were many clones, like this APF TV fun. And even Atari's Pong was a clone of the Magnavox Odyssey. But there was an unusual category of clones. Toys. These leaned far more to toys than video games, but they offered a more affordable alternative, especially if you didn't have or didn't want your kids using a TV. These are each interesting in their own ways, but today we're going to be taking a look at perhaps the most impressive but least accurate example, Blip. Blip is a handheld game, which were very popular at the time, putting it among good company like the Speak and Spell and Merlin. However, the similarities pretty much end there. But first, let's start to get familiar with Blip. When starting a game, you have the option to choose between one or two player mode. One player mode is more of a practice mode though, and the ball is always bounced back as if you were playing against a wall, which is how many Pong games handled it at the time, because opponent AI was pretty much non-existent. The game will wait until you serve the ball by pulling down on the respective player's red lever in the lower corners. You'll get used to doing this a lot, because this game is brutally difficult, but I want to come back to the difficulty later. Scores for the players are kept on dials set in the top of the playfield. They can be manually reset or adjusted with wheels on the back. The player's scores are automatically incremented when the other player serves. Now before we get into the actual gameplay, I want to cover some other details first. Blip was released in 1977 by Tomy, a well-known toy company. And despite its branding with the MCIR-inspired More Computer font and digital claim, Flip is not a computerized, electronic, or even electromechanical game. The game does use power and takes two AA batteries, but even the power switch just indicates with a colored piece of plastic. If you watch the ball moving around, you will get some telling clues as to how it works. It moves only in very specific paths and always goes through the center of the play area. It's actually incapable of bouncing against the walls because the movement is mechanically fixed inside. Everything about it is mechanical in fact. The only thing using any electricity is the single red LED for the ball positioned at the end of an arm that moves. Even the motor that moves the arm is mechanically powered by winding up a spring before playing. The arm motion inside is handled by a complex system of concentric compound gears and channels. There's an amazing view of this in the original 1976 patent for Blip, which calls it a simulated ball return toy. You might think this would be limiting, but there's an impressive amount of variety in the movement from these. There are three numbered buttons on each side the players use to deflect the ball. With those, we can easily keep track of where the ball goes as the gears make a full cycle. And after 36 stops, it begins to repeat. If that seems short, keep in mind that you're going to be constantly interrupted when you miss the ball, which happens a lot. The ball is successfully deflected when you push the button down before it gets there. Funnily enough though, a successful bounce actually happens by having the button miss the ball. If you fail to deflect, the ball is stopped by the button, and pulling the serve lever moves all of the button stops out of the way to let it continue. And if you think you'll just hold all the buttons down, they thought of that, and the buttons are blocked by a piece of plastic that moves to prevent multiple from being pressed at once. You may think that only having to manage those three buttons would make it easy, but you tend to get caught up switching between them and miss often. But that's not even the worst part. The ball is almost impossible to lead unless you memorize the pattern. When you play a normal game of Pong, you will watch the ball bounce off of your opponent's paddle, giving you a long time to figure out where it's going. But Blip recenters the ball as part of the motion, having the distance you have to react. And Blip is much faster than Pong, giving you only about 150 milliseconds to react before the ball gets from the center to one of the buttons. But on top of that, it barely moves vertically, so you have very little indication which direction it's going. So it's hard to tell where it's going, you don't have a lot of time to react, and the buttons can trip you up. These all make Blip pretty brutally difficult, but I think it needs to be hard. If it were too easy, you'd master it and get bored. Blip keeps you on your toes and you always feel like you're just about to get it. This makes Blip a great game to keep coming back to, not to try and win in one sitting. 
Blip is very much a product of its time, and something like this would be considered far too costly to make today compared to making a computerized version. But the original price at Sears of $7.44 was a bargain compared to the $179 telegames. Even an average Pong clone like the APF was pushing $60, making Blip an obvious bargain for a similar but compromised experience. I've heard from a few people who had one of these growing up and they all have fond memories. And I know if I had this when I was young, I would too. Now though, I think it should be respected as an ingenious way of delivering a similar experience to what was on the cutting edge using only minimal design. I'm very happy to have picked this up and to have the opportunity to try it out. And if you have the chance, I'd say you should give it a shot too. I hope you enjoyed this look at Blip. This was an experimental video for me, being the first with music, and I'm curious to hear what everyone thinks about it. I'll be back with more soon, so you might want to subscribe, and if you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.